Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time joining us. My name is Matt and this beautiful green hunk of metal here is my beater with a heater. It's a 99 Jeep Cherokee that I picked up for $200. And in the previous videos, I pulled the old motor out because it was blown, making all kind of racket and I slapped the new Marketplace Find uh, $300 engine in it. If you haven't seen any of that, links are down in the description. Check those out. On to today's course of business, we're going to be trying to protect this thing from the tons and tons and tons of salt that they dump all over our roads annually in an effort to melt ice. Uh, that's right, I live in the Pennsylvania Rust Belt. Vehicles here by this age in life are usually pretty well gone. This thing is a survivor's. Don't know where it's been its whole life. Maybe it was a southern vehicle, but the underside of this vehicle is surprisingly sound for a 21 year old vehicle. There's a little bit of body rot in the fenders, not much at all, uh, like I say, for the year. So, in an effort to try and combat the salt, we're going to be spraying some undercoating on it today. Hey guys, real quick before we get into the meat of the video, I just want to say this video is sponsored by Yankum Ropes. Fantastic American manufacturer of off-road recovery ropes or just about anything recovery ropes I'm not going to sit here and preach anything to you if you want to find out more about this company and the stuff they make Links down in the description. You can help the channel at the same time. You can save yourself 5% I picked up this here five gallon bucket of fluid film for like hundred and sixty some dollars off of Amazon and I got a spray gun kit for it. I've never used this stuff before, but after watching uh, Project Farms review videos on undercoating, I decided this was the best bang for the buck for my needs. And hopefully five gallons will last enough to do this Jeep and several other vehicles that I own. So, uh, you know, you could lay on your back and flop around like a worm or something, trying to scramble underneath here and spray all this stuff into the little nooks and crannies, but uh, I think I got a better idea. Before we get into the meter, let's go ahead and look at what we got here. I'm in no way affiliated with any of these companies. I went and bought all this stuff on my own, spent my own money. Nobody sent me anything for nothing. Oh, sweet stickers. Love stickers. And a keychain. Fancy. So I guess wool wax is another product like fluid film. Never used that either, but I don't know. So we got a gun here, pretty simple, hook this up to your air compressor, yeah we got like a standard spray nozzle, we got an extended spray nozzle, and then we've got a real long flexible spray nozzle, so that'll be good for like getting up inside frame rail pockets and stuff. These unibodies got tons and tons of little holes and nooks and crannies where you can hopefully pump this stuff up into and it'll help save them. So pretty straightforward I guess we're just gonna take one of these jars fill it flue of our uh, fluid film here slap the air to it and uh, Bob's your auntie plumb this thing full of fluid film I'm thinking that the hardest and nastiest part of this job is gonna be figuring out how to get this pretty thick liquid into this here bottle I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that yet. I think a ladle would be helpful maybe. Kind of thick. Well here's a real quick system I just came up with. So I got an old oil quart here. Stick that in there like so. And I'm going to use the other half of the thing as a scooper. Oh yeah, I'll just get this nice custardy tapioca pudding consistency. Just dump her in there. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be messy. But I can definitely see how this would be good for the underside of your vehicle in our climate. It is going down through the funnel, so it's just a matter of time. All right, that actually worked out pretty good. I was able to fill up both jars here pretty quickly. So let's uh, get one thrown onto our sprayer. Hope to get a fitting rigged up onto this thing as well. I was wrong. This isn't a this isn't a spray nozzle. This is a suction nozzle. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the uh, flexible nozzle here, and my goal is to get into all the little teeny holes and compartments in the doors and the frame rails first, and then 
give everything a general coating. Now before you, some of you guys really blow a gasket and stroke out, I have chalked the front wheels here. So we're like doubly safe now. Also, once I get it up in the air, I'm gonna take that there boom lock and put it on the cylinder so that even if we would blow a line, which I'm not anticipating, that thing will hold the boom from coming down on us or at least give me a split second to get out from underneath of it. Uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably screaming at the computer at this point, but I'm pretty confident. Better hold on to your hats, it's about to get western. I, th I think we're good here. Everything picked up nicely. That bumper looks pretty rough. Probably gonna put some off-road bumpers on it or something. That'd be nice. But really, the unibody, pretty solid. I'm interested to figure out where all this water is coming from. Uh, I mean, this started as soon as I picked it up. It's not fuel or anything. I thought maybe the tank was overflowing because it's pretty full. It's just water. And it's coming out of the rustiest spot in the, uh, the car here. I don't know where that's coming from. Okay. Now remember, I haven't used this stuff either. So, if you've never used this stuff, we're both in the same boat. There we go. Starting to get a little coming out. Yeah. Not nearly as much as I was hoping. Oh, yeah. 
the direction said to use like 90 psi and i've got it dialed up to like 120 so i'm gonna go ahead and dial it back and see if that helps our flow any because i really want to be putting down more than this yeah it seemed to help a bit <laughs> All right. Instantly, I know what I did. These have a breather here at the top of the pot, and if you rock this thing back and this thing blocks the breather, it pressurizes the tank and just blows it all over the place. So, don't do that. I'm also using this uh, long wand extension to get in on top of the cross members and stuff. Places that would be hard to reach with just a wide fan spray pattern. Now's a good easy time too. I can open up these doors. Get down in here in the hinges. Uh, we could pop out our soft plug to get in all the way down under here, underneath the bottoms of the doors. Uh, fill up these little holes inside the doors, everything. We're doing pretty good on this stuff too. So far I'm only through like a half a bottle here. I think we're getting to this vehicle just in the nick of time. Mostly surface rust on here. These unibodies, once the really the rot sets in, they're done. All right, since we got the uh, drum brakes in the rear here, there's very few things that we have to worry about getting this stuff on. Uh, we're just gonna try to keep it off the exhaust system, and it doesn't really matter if we do. I mean, up around the header, maybe, if you got a lot on there, it could maybe catch fire, but back here, nothing's gonna do anything. It's just gonna smoke. So right now, we just go ahead and soak up everything. We'll try to keep it off the tires and uh, try not to get it down in the cracks here along the drums, because you could still get it down in there, but. Yeah, this fan tip works a lot better. Yeah.
Okay, I am done for it with right now. I needed to do some work on the inside of the doors uh, so I didn't go ahead and fill too much of those. You know, you could pull out soft plugs like up here and stuff and aim that wand down in there and fill it up, but I need to work on the door window systems in I think three out of four doors. So rather than deal with that mess, I'll just fill them up here later. But I coated everything really good underneath here. That fan tip worked excellent. Uh, I really concentrated and hit all the spots that looked rustier and gave everything a good thorough coating. I'm sure I put a lot more on than uh, most professionals that you would take it to. I mean, I kind of drowned it. But like I said earlier, I don't think I don't think you could really put too much on. I think the more you use, the better. So I went through uh, three full bottles to do what I did here. And I forget how big those bottles are, but I'm pretty confident that you could do a full-size pickup truck pretty thoroughly with one gallon of fluid film. Uh, like I said earlier too, not endorsed by these guys at all, not affiliated in any way, but it seems like a pretty good product. So we figured we'd give it a shot here. Let's go ahead and get this thing down and put it in the garage and let that stuff dry for a day or two. All right, well, we're about ready to go take this thing on a little off-road adventure, literally test out our skills, test out the uh, stock flexibility, which I know isn't incredible, but uh, just, you know, get to play around a little bit again. It's nice to have a beater and be able to just go uh, go hit the dirt for a little bit. But anyway, before we can do that, the four-wheel drive does work, but there is a U-joint right here at this wheel that is just horrible. Uh, it's amazing that it's actually still held together as bad as it is. So we're gonna get this wheel popped off of here and work on changing that real quick. Best thing about it, I don't even have to go buy one. That's one of the parts that was included in the pile of parts in the back seat when I bought this thing. So, score. These kind of rims get golded right here around this hub. It's a tight fit and the rust, the rust uh, swells, kind of holds it, holds it together. I can't talk today. So you just get your uh, standard 16 pound persuader here. The rims are about shot too. There's a bunch of rust scale and stuff on the inside of the rim here. They got one of them that leaks down. That's probably why. It's probably got a pinhole rusted through it. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the rim because it's not going to matter. There we go. <laughs> for, for the latest and greatest in performance brake cooling, here we have uh, rust jacking, or whatever you want to call this, scale buildup. The fins in between these... Uh, 
rotor faces here, man, they're just swelled up bad. The rotors themselves, pretty good. They're nice and smooth yet. Don't have any bad ridges to them. Uh, but the man, <laughs> the cooling fence, whoo. So here's our bad U-joint. <laughs> she got a little bit of slop in her. That's about as bad as they can get before they catastrophically fail. So theoretically, it's not too bad of a job here. All we gotta do is unbolt our caliper, hang that off to the side there. The rotor will slide right off. We'll have to undo our axle nut and we'll be able to take the wheel bearing off at that point and then slide the whole axle assembly out and replace the U-joint. I say it all the time, if you don't have a cordless impact with uh, swivel wobble sockets here, man, I don't know what you're doing, because these things get in everywhere. No more ratchets, like I hardly ever use a ratchet anymore, it's fantastic. So the pads actually look pretty decent. I mean, they're not new, but they have plenty of life left in them. Beautiful. <laughs> More scale piled up in here. <laughs> I tossed the rotor aside and look how much scale just flew off of it. That flat floor was swept clean before I threw that. Here we can see the fossilized remains of our dust shield. That's doing a lot these days. There we go. Nope. Just, wow. Just split a snap-on socket clean in half. Wow. I don't think I've ever actually seen that. I mean, I've seen it, I guess, but... Holy crap. You guys see that? See? You pay big money, they still break, so you might as well go with the ones you can get replaced the easiest. I'm actually a big fan of Harbor Freight Tools, Cobalt, you know, all those ones that you can just run out and get replaced real quick. Now this guy, I gotta wait for a snap-on truck to come around, and they don't exactly come to my garage, so I gotta catch them somewhere else. Well, the only other 12-point I have that's gonna fit that is a 3H drive, and that ain't no good. 3H drive Craftsman, with the odds that that's gonna do it. My hopes aren't high. Oh, well, I think we're going to have to preheat. I'm going to pray for another miracle here and hope our uh, Craftsman 3H drive socket holds up to the abuse here. The old snap-on couldn't hang. Yep, <laughs> there's two. In case you're wondering too, whenever I put these back together, they will get a nice liberal application of the old copper never sees here. So there's the second bolt. There we go. Something happened anyway. I don't even know if it moved. Yep, it moved. <laughs> you really shouldn't beat on that thing unless you're replacing the bearing because that is impacting your uh, the balls and the ball bearing. So what I'll do is I'll get a chisel drive it down between the uh, steering knuckle flange and the flange on the bearing here. Oh, I see separation. There we go. <laughs> yep, and that is all that's left of your dust cover, your dust backing plate, or whatever you want to call that, dust shroud when you live in Pennsylvania. No ABS on this model either. Darn proud to see that. I despise ABS. Oh yeah. Yeah, this here's dandy. All right, we got our axle chucked up in the vise here. Now, I'm not saying you have to have a 
oxy fuel cutting torch here to do this job but man does it make life easy uh, what we're gonna do here because these caps just press in here and they're gonna be seized in there tighter than you know what so what we're gonna do is make a slice right across this u-joint and it'll just knock out of there hopefully Ugh. There we go. Everything just falls out. Now all we gotta do is drive our cap straight through. Maybe. There we go. There we go. There's one side out. Three more to go. Hey guys, it moved. <laughs> So here we go, we got our U-joint right here. And the way you put these in, you pull off these caps. Now there's all your little teeny needle bearings in there. Uh, and they're all kind of suspended with some thick grease. So you're going to want to make sure you don't lose any of those. And don't get any dirt on any of these clean surfaces. You don't want to get any dirt on these stub shafts or in these bearing cups here. There's a rubber lip seal around these too. You're going to make sure that doesn't come dislodged in the process. But... We're gonna do. You're gonna take off two of these things for now. Hopefully, I can touch this shaft. Yeah, it's not too hot. And you're gonna kind of tuck it in here. There we go. And you'll get both of your caps now started at the same time. And we'll use the vise and crank them down and push the caps in together. And once they're in there, there's some teeny little locking clips that will uh, hold these from backing out of the yoke. get them started at least actually these ones are going in pretty easy the yoke's still hot so it should allow enough clearance uh, so that's what we want to avoid right there losing our other caps while we're doing this okay so yeah this one's going together pretty easy doesn't look like we're gonna to need to use the vise as a press when you're putting these on always double check down inside there and make sure any of your needles haven't uh, come loose and like fallen over because it'll go on but it won't go on all the way you'll be sitting there trying to force it and what you'll be doing is damaging those needles in the process Ooh. so one side went all the way we're just pushing the other side now there we go. Went all the way home. Now we can take our little half moon clips here. And those things will go right over top of these bearing caps.
Back over here on the steering knuckle, I've taken this bearing surface here and cleaned it up good with the wire wheel. And uh, same thing inside here where the uh, bearing flange sits down in there. And before we put it back together, we're going to spare the next guy, which will probably be us. Go ahead and coat this thing up with some good never sees. Now we're getting ready to insert the axle again. You're going to check your spline down here, make sure you didn't drop it in the dirt or anything and get it all nasty before you go sticking it back in the uh, pumpkin. Ours is clean. You can put some oil or grease on it if you want to. Mine's got plenty of oil still stuck in it. So we'll go ahead and feed it in there and do a little operation number. Try not to touch the sides so we don't get it all dirty. Should be good that way. Got to get the spline lined up for your drive shaft. Axle shaft, whatever. Got her all buttoned back up here. She's ready to go hit the uh, light off-road trails right now. We'll see what she can do without uh, tearing it up on the first outing at least. Let's go. You guys are going to be able to see much of nothing. This job, like most things, took me a little bit longer to get done than I'd like. So it's dark now. We're out here at an undisclosed location. Going to do a little bit of light off road. A little bit of mud, a little bit of hills. Well, I know it's hard for you guys to see, but uh, we got a little bit of wheeling in. Got her a little bit muddy for the first time. Uh, definitely gonna need some better tires. These are these are good snow tires for like on the road, but not exactly a off-road masterpiece or anything. We're gonna do one more little rut hill and then uh, go home and put this video together for you guys. All right, the old cheap Jeep here made it back from its first run. Didn't do anything too radical with it. Did get it high centered there. I let Buddy drive for, for two minutes, and I know he's a capable off-road driver. But he hung her up in the first couple minutes, so got to razz him about it. If I had a locker, it would have come right out, or bigger tires probably. But uh, no harm, no foul. All good. Made it home safe and sound. I'm gonna go slap this video together. 
So I know it was pretty dark out and you guys probably couldn't see a whole lot there, but if you like the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see some more videos on the old $200 XJ here, click that subscribe button. There's going to be more coming in the future along with plenty of other wide variety of topics. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Later.